season 4 has finally arrived and my FPS is amazing right now, so I thought I'd share what competitive settings I use with extra methods on boosting your FPS, which you haven't seen before. Along with that, I thought I'd showcase a few lower input methods, tricks to lower your ping, and many more things to overall give you a huge advantage. If it helps, please drop a like, subscribe to the channel, and use my code in the item shop if you do buy that brand new battle pass. Starting off with the video settings, make sure full screen is selected for zero delay. Resolution, most players use 1920 by 1080 for its high resolution look and best visibility. However, I recommend trying a stretched resolution as you'll get a huge FPS boost as well as bigger looking player models. To set up a stretched res, you've got three different methods, which I explain more in this video on screen. However, the easiest way is to literally change these two sections inside your game user settings config. Frame rate limit, I like to use either unlimited or match my monitor's refresh rate. So if you use a 360Hz monitor, you want to use 360FPS in-game. Just don't forget to go into the window settings and make sure you select the highest hertz for your monitor. As for rendering mode, you want to use performance mode as it provides much clearer visibility as things like grass are removed, which also improves your FPS big time. In addition, some players boost their FPS further by using potato graphics, which essentially lowers the graphics more than you normally can. I made a tutorial all about this on screen here. I'll have a link below. Brightness, here's what all three types of brightness look like this season. Colorblind modes, here's a comparison of all three. That's Deuteranope, Protonope, and Tritonope. This season, I think Tritonope looks the best. For view distance, I recommend using at least medium, as this is the minimum view distance. You can see items on the floor. Although a lot of people do like having this off for the extra FPS. Advanced graphics, I recommend using the Nvidia Reflex Low Latency setting if you're using a mid-end PC. You want to have it on. If you've got a high-end PC, you might want to use on plus boost. And if you've got a low-end PC, you should actually have this off as you want the most FPS possible. Mouse sensitivity for the X and Y, I recommend using anything from 6.5% as the lowest to 14% as the highest. With the ADS sense being 30% as the lowest to 80% as the highest. And scope being 80% as the lowest and 100% as the highest. While using a mouse DPI of at least 800 and 1000 mouse hertz. This will help prevent any sort of pixel skipping from occurring, which can happen on lower DPIs like 400. Oh, another thing, inside the Windows mouse settings, if you use the default sense, as well as have the mouse acceleration turned off, this can benefit you a ton. Trust me, you do not need to use mouse acceleration. Keyboard movement, I recommend using these settings on screen or having it off in this season. Game settings, make sure firstly you are using your local region as you want the lowest ping possible. Combat options, these are all personal preference. Building options are as well, but for auto confirm edits, off this means you manually have to confirm each edit, which equals three steps in total. Edit auto confirms the edits for you, which equals two steps in total. Reset auto resets the edit for you, that also takes two steps total. And having it on both auto confirms and resets the edit for you, equaling two steps in total. For replays and energy saving, I recommend having all of these settings off to get even more FPS. Hood settings, the reticle ammo indicator adds a visual ammo counter whereas having it off shows nothing. Damage numbers, list will manually list the damage dealt whereas cumulative will automatically add it up for you. Reticle damage feedback adds these icons to showcase the type of enemy. Hit only adds a hit marker and off will show none of that feedback. As for the rest of the hood settings, these affect all the other elements found on your heads up display. Oh, another mention is this application I found on the Epic Games Store. The pros have been using to get a custom crosshair in game. Since it's been approved to be on the Epic Games Store, I can only assume that it is allowed, but do use at your own risk. Audio settings, I highly recommend using the high quality setting if you have got a decent modern headset. Although if you've got a low end PC and a low quality headset, you might want to use low as this setting can apparently decrease performance slightly. Under subtitles, you'll see options. Inside here, copy exactly what I've got. You want to turn the subtitles off. You want to make the text size extra small. You want to make the text color white, the text border on none, 
and then the background opacity on clear. And that right there is a little trick used by Bugger to slightly boost your FPS, so be sure to give it a go if you haven't already. Also, make sure you are using visualized sound effects, as it's what every pro is using for good reason. Basically, a visual sound indicator that points you to different things happening in game, like footsteps of enemies and stuff like that. Keybinds, for these you want to set them up to be the most optimal. Here are two examples you can configure. I recommend using either set one, where wall is on X, floor is on V, stairs is on C, and roof is on left shift. And then you've got set two, which is mouse button five on the wall, floor on V, stairs on mouse button four, and roof on left shift. Just try out either one of these sets and optimize them to feel what's best for you. Next, if you want to download game updates faster, open up the Epic Games Launcher folder, then locate the engine file inside paste this command. And what this does is it increases your download speeds on the Epic Games Launcher, so you'll download game updates way faster than before. From there, head back into the Epic Games Launcher folder. You then want to open up saved. Then inside here, you want to look for some web cache folders. Now for me, I've only got the one, but you may see these other two folders that are on screen right now. And basically what you want to do is highlight all of them and actually go ahead and press the delete button to delete them. This could potentially solve the issues that may prevent you from actually launching and playing the game itself. Next from that, head into the install options. In here, you'll see save the world, which is the specific game files for that. If you don't play it, disable this setting. High resolution textures, these are required to make the game look a lot more beautiful in game. But if you disable this setting, it'll give you a slight FPS boost. DirectX 12 shaders, these are required to use the DirectX rendering mode. If you don't use this and use performance mode, you should disable this setting. And then you've got pre-download stream assets, which I like to keep enabled because if you didn't know, this pre-installs all the assets when you join the lobby, which prevents the assets from being streamed when you encounter them in game. So overall, if you copy these exact installation options, you will get more FPS. After, head back into the Epic Games launcher, then go into settings at the top right. You want to scroll down to you see desktop notifications and you want to disable both of these options as when they are pushed out by Epic Games, they can cause FPS stutters in game. After that, you can scroll down to you find additional command line arguments and if you tick this, this is optional by the way, you can try pasting in these different commands for different benefits. After, head into Manage, where you should also verify your in-game files before playing any new season to remove old, outdated files. Moving on, I've got some optional PC settings you can configure to further boost your FPS. Starting off with the best Windows settings. First one is to press the Windows key and R, then type in System Properties Performance.exe, and this will open up the Visual Effects tab. If you click on Adjust for Best Performance, you'll notice it unchecks all the set ends but what we need to do is tick these five essential ones which I'm doing on screen right now to get the basic functionality from Windows. It's just more stripped down without all the fancy animations and stuff like that. From there, we're going to type in services. And basically what we're going to do in here is disable some of the services to lower our overall processes in Windows. It'll basically be stuff that has no sort of use whatsoever and you will rarely use, like the wallet service right here. Now, if you do actually use this, you obviously don't want to do it. But if you literally just right click on it, go into its properties, then head into the startup type and disable it. That's literally all you need to do to disable a process slash service. There's plenty of other ones you can do it to as well, like the Windows Insider service. Just go into the properties and then disable it like so. I also like to go into the run box and type in temp. I then like to select all of these and simply delete them. I do this again with percentage sign, temp percentage sign, and yet again with prefetch. Also, while the game is running, I press control, alt, delete, go into the task manager, and then find Fortnite, right click on it, go to detail, then right click on the top exe, set the priority from the default normal to high. You'll notice as well in the task manager, if you look at the very bottom, you'll see uptime. To your surprise, the uptime may be very, very high, like some of these examples are on screen, like some are just ridiculous. And this is because of a fast start feature, which has become quite the meme. So to fix this, head into power options, click change settings that are unavailable, and simply uncheck this option. Now when you shut down your PC, your PC will fully shut down and the uptime will will be reset. Oh, if you go into gaming 2, specifically under the game bar, you want to ensure that that is turned off as it can give you micro stutters. As well, in the search, if you type in power plan, click edit power plan, then change advanced settings, you'll notice by default it's on a normal power plan. Instead, you want to change that to high performance, which as you can imagine, will make it perform at a higher level. And the last thing I've seen a lot of the pros do is head into their accessibility settings. They then go into visual effects and under where it says transparency effects, 
Flex will actually disable this setting, which does actually make Windows look a lot cleaner and it will help with performance. Next, for those that use Windows 10, I recommend ISLC, a tool that's helped people lower their delay. To get it, simply Google it, where you can download it. Once opened, you can customize it to lower your input delay. The list size should be left at default, but below that, you have free memory setting that should be changed, depending on how much RAM you have in your system. To check this, you can press Control alt delete go into Task Manager, head into Performance, and under Memory, you'll see it there. And whatever RAM you have, you can put the corresponding values inside. After that, you can click this button, which will clear the value. And there's also an optional setting too, which can lower your timer resolution. You can change that to 0 0.50, tick the box, and then press Start. Next, I want to showcase the NVIDIA app, which a lot of pros have been taking advantage of. Automatic overclocking for GeForce GPUs. All you need to do is download the NVIDIA app, or if you've already got the app installed, you can head into Settings, About, and tick the Early Access box. That'll then initiate the latest update to download and install, where you'll notice a new section called System. Inside there, under the Performance section, you'll notice a new automatic overclock feature that allows you to overclock your GPU in one single click, which Nvidia state that once you do enable it, they'll perform a scan to test your graphics card's capabilities over the course of 10 to 20 minutes. They recommend that you leave your PC idle while this is performed. Then once the scan has finished and your GPU has been overclocked, you can expect similar results to this on screen, where you can see you'll get improved clock speeds and in turn higher FPS. With minimal risk too, as Nvidia state that automatic tuning won't damage your GPU nor will it void your warranty. The worst thing that can happen really is your PC becoming unstable, which if it does, you can simply deactivate the overclock by literally just unselecting it and it'll go back to normal. Moving on finally to the best Nvidia settings. First off, make sure you're using the latest drivers, especially if you are on modern PC components. Although older machines may benefit from older drives. Next, you want to head into the Nvidia control panel, go into manage 3D settings, and you want to copy all of my settings that are set up in this video on screen in the manage 3D section. Then finally, go into adjust desktop size and position, select your main game and monitor, then select full screen and make sure a GPU is selected with the highest refresh rate possible. And finally, we've got the best network settings. Straight away, you want to update your network drivers to make sure these are the latest ones available. Then want to go into your network settings and basically set them up like I've got on screen. These are essentially the best network settings you can use. Just make sure to copy one for one what I'm using on screen right now. After that, you can use the lowest ping DNS server, which Epic Games themselves recommend. Just go into your network settings as shown on screen. Then in the DNS section where you put the address, you can put in a custom one. And to find out which one is the best one for you, you can use DNS benchmark, or you can type in this command on screen inside the CMD. If it helps, please drop a like, subscribe to the channel, and use my code in the item shop if you do buy that brand new battle pass.